Hello there and welcome to another episode of my Flutter app building journey. In this episode, we will learn how to use Stream Builders. Previously, we have established the connection between our login block and our scaffold along with its successor widgets. Use and I use the provider package to do that. Now, I will show you how we could use the Stream Builder uh, class in Flutter to be able to access or utilize this public streams and functions uh, in our widgets. So, let's begin. To do that, let's take a look at our email field.dart. Here, we are initially returning a padding, but this time I will wrap this inside the stream builder. So I did that, but I can do that by pressing control dot in the padding and then wrap with stream builder. After that, I will then assign a stream. But before we can assign a stream, let me create a variable called login block. And that would contain provider dot of context. So as you will notice, there is a red squiggly line at the provider. And in that case, I will just import a library called provider.dart. And this context right here is a pass on context coming from the app.dart or the login page rather. See here, we have the context and what I would like to do is to pass this context to my email field widget. So I'll just do that right here and then save the file. So in my email field, the Dart file, I will require the passing or uh, the transfer of the field context right here. And there we go. So our problem is right here. Let's see. It says here that the logic login block isn't used. And that is because we didn't use this one yet. So now that we are able to access this login block, I will access the email stream here from our login block and press dot and then paste in email so save it's now good so basically what we're doing is we are returning a stream builder which uh, takes the stream or monitors the stream of login block dot email and uh, now you will ask me, what is a stream builder? A stream builder, looking at the documentation, is a widget that builds itself based on the latest snapshot of interaction with the stream. So remember, if we go back to my login block right here, and login validator for the third. So basically what we want to happen is, we want to monitor if our text field, let's say this email text field, will contain this at symbol or dot com. Or, uh, sorry about that. If our email text field contains the at symbol and dot com string. 
So to do that, if we go back to the login block, the start file, we monitor the changes uh, in our fields by adding each character to the sync right here. So that's the purpose of this sync that end and this stream. So basically what is happening is that as soon as we type a couple of letters right here, let's say let's try to test this out. Okay. Let's say email. Okay, so it's not yet uh, fully working. But yeah, it's not yet. Okay. So the reason for that is we lack a couple of items in our code uh, to enable such monitoring. So to do that, uh, let's monitor for changes first. So let's add an on change prop property inside our. Uh, sorry about that. It's not. It should not be in the login page, but rather in the email field. The dot file. So inside our text field, we will add an on change property, and that on change property, uh, we will go back to our login block and copy the email changes to monitor any changes in the email field, and any changes in the email field will then be added to the stream, and. We will also add an error text inside our input declaration and this input text or our error text rather will be coming from the snapshot dot error like so. So let me do a hot restart of this application and then let's try to test this out. So in the email field, I will try to type in Gerald. And immediately you will notice that there is an error message saying that uh, I should enter a valid email. And in order to uh, track that this is a valid email, or in, and to, in order for the system to tell us that what we're typing is valid, email, uh, I should uh, have an at symbol and a string of dot com. So let's do that. So at gmail.com. And there you have it. The, er the error message is gone. So seems that our validation is working as well. Uh, so let's do the same thing now with our password field. So I will just copy this final login block and then I will go to my password field at start. Paste it right here. I will import the provider that dart and then I will pass in build context so name context and of course our login underscore page will again require context. I'll just say this. Let's go back to the password field. So again instead of returning a padding, I will wrap this padding inside the stream builder. And okay, I will get the password speed. And place it right here. Again, this password stream is coming from my login underscore block file right here. Okay, so this particular stream right here. So after that, I will then assign an error text inside my 
input decoration and that error text will be coming from my snapshot.error. This will only be triggered if the condition inside my validation or login validation is not met. As you can see, the password should be greater than or equal to 5. And of course, the very important uh, or the most important one is to monitor any changes. Okay, so I will add an on change property inside my text field, and this on change property will be the login block dot password changes like so, and this one and that one is coming from this right here, the sync dot add password dot sync dot add. And there you go. Let me, just, let me just add a comma here. So let's try to restart. And let me try to place the password now. That is less than five characters. So one, two, three, four. So it shows an error message stating that the password must be at least five characters. As soon as I hit the fifth character, the error will be gone. All right. So now let's move on to our submit button. Again, we will be requiring or we will be passing in the context coming from our login screen or login page. So let's go back to the login page and assign the context here. Press save or control S. And then I will then be pasting or I will just uh, type in final login block is equals to provider dot of con text okay and I will just import this provider dot dart library and again I will wrap this raised button inside the stream builder oops let me just repeat the process And then I will go back to my login block the dart file. I will then copy this submit button as valid. Go back to my submit button dot dart file, and then type in login block dot, then paste the stream. Now, right now, if I press this. Uh, press this button right here, the login button. It will show me you uh, a detail here, uh, a print of string uh, stating you click me. Uh, I would like to change that uh, functionality uh, such that the button will only be active if both the email field and the password fields are success uh, validations are complete and successful. So I would just like to add a validation effect sort of. Uh, and to do that, let's do some small changes in our button okay all right so let's do it right here so i'll remove the initial function assigned to my 
on pressed uh, property inside the raised button and I will now assign a snapshot so I will now monitor the activity on the stream and if the snapshot dot has data uh, is valid or if it's true then I will assign uh, let's see block or the login block dot what is the name of our validation or, or stream here it's uh, submit button is valid or we, oh sorry about that uh, I think uh, okay this one submit login so let's execute submit login function if not then let's set it to null let's do that and as soon as I hit save you'll notice that the button changed from uh, color green to black I would like to inverse the color set right here so say the disabled color should be white and the disabled text color should be black like so so I think we're through with it so let's try to test if this button will turn to green if both of the validations are successful in both text fields. So let's try to do that. Girl at gmail.com and uh, let's try in the password. Let's say one, two, three, four, five. Great. So our login button changed its color as soon as both of the validations are successful let me try to click this and looking at the debug console at the bottom you will notice that the email is showing gerald at gmail.com and password of one two three four four five great so uh just a quick recap, we are able to uh, finally somehow finish this uh, simple application. I showed you how to use the stream builders in order to monitor the streams, uh, snapshots, and we were able to utilize the snapshots in our builder. Okay. Also, we were able to access the public functions and streams from our login block by first instantiating or making a link between the block and the scaffold in our app.dart file. And then in our widgets, we just uh, passed in the context, the build context right here, from the login page dot dart, and then we utilize that context for us to access the login block. And lastly, we were able to. Uh, we, will, we were able to use the snapshot for obtaining the error message and also we were able to utilize the sync of our streams to monitor for any changes in our text fields such as the email and that's it so give a thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe to see more videos about Flutter development. Uh, my name is Gerald again and see you on the next episode. Thank you for watching.